our channel, Target Histories to 2, and the BRF to Auto. Bandit 06, uh, clearance available, watch red copy. Bandit 6, ready copy. Bandit 6, good, whiskey 291, field 2, departure, mouse transition, tango 03, rooting. Maintain 2000, departure on 363, decimal 1, your squawk 4722. Copy all, 4722. Roger, active flight, Navy, Navy November 28, 436, clearance available. That was a clearance copy. 436, you're clear to bar via Julian 5 departs from period of transition. Put the information down at the bottom of the head there. I'm looking through the head now. And uh, you can see kind of what I'm doing. Vice President, Mr. Speaker, members of the Senate and of the House of Representatives, yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. The United States was at peace with that nation and at the solicitation of Japan was still in conversation with its government and its emperor looking toward the maintenance of peace in the Pacific. The attack yesterday on the Hawaiian Islands has caused severe damage to American naval and military forces. I regret to tell you that very many American lives have been lost. In addition, American ships have been reported torpedoed on the high seas between San Francisco and Honolulu. As Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy, I have directed that all measures be taken for our defense. But always will our whole nation remember the character of the onslaught against us. It may take us to overcome this premeditated invasion. The American people in their righteous might will win through to absolute victory.
This is one of the off-route areas, as you might be able to tell. Here's some of that monofilament line I was talking about. For surprise. I did, yeah. huh? Yep. Anyway, this is a battle dressing station. Uh, the last survivor. Uh, we. Anyway, we. Uh, like I said, this this last one when the when the ship uh, because if sailors all over the ship and if you got wounded, especially seriously, they would bring you down here and try to try to keep you alive long enough to make it to the sick bay. Uh, Anyway, they, they did a lot of things, and I'm getting readings up here. There shouldn't be. I don't know if your camera's setting it off or not. Anyway, the uh, in here we 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 very seldom get a whole lot. Now we talked about that one investigation team in here, uh, the, the father and son team. Well, they put their stuff out and asked me to comment on it. I wrote back to Jeff and said. Because Jeff was standing over there at, in the door filming his stuff, and his son was over here filming him. Well, while they were doing all that, the door just started closing on its own. And they didn't notice that when they first reviewed it, but that's interesting. Anyway, I was in here with about 10 people one time, and that door just slammed uh, hard. It was like, you know, pay attention to me sort of thing. Anyway, you saw about 11 people levitate all at the same time. Uh, Anyway, we get a lot of stuff in here, but mostly we get stuff outside there uh, in the passageways. People walking, people talking, tapping. Yeah, we're, we're going to be going down there. Uh, you, did you guys bring any cat balls or anything? Yeah, you said one out there. Do you want me to put it further away? No, just right, right on there. The, on the doorway? Yeah. Sorry. No, keep doing your, th your own thing here. They, you, you're the investigators. <laughs> My name is Pearl and this is Tommy. If there's anyone in here and wants to speak to us, feel free to come speak to us. Don't be shy. Can you say that again? Can you walk where we can hear your footsteps? Very audible. I'm just curious, was the voice that you heard male or female? I couldn't make it out. Okay. It's coming from this direction. Which direction? This direction. That, that's that's the, the usual direction it, it comes from. We get a lot of activity out there. Uh, I can't remember which, which brother it was, but they actually had a spirit walk up to them. Uh, you could hear the footsteps, but stop just short of them. Right. direction so you see the first one go off second one go off because like they're, like they're walking they're, they're up they're to here around, yeah, yeah. what is that do you hear it i can't tell if, if i can't tell if that's if walking like a little like a yeah. No, I don't. Oh. Could we hear the water here? It's the water. Water. Is it? Yeah. It sounds like people talking. Like, like. Sometimes they'll go up to your ear, and only you will hear it, though. Oh, I hear water. It sounds like. You, is that what you're hearing? That's yeah. water, but I heard like a little screech. I hear like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Might be water. We 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 got a lot of water lines in here. So is that gurgling? That's 
Feel free to walk in here. Don't be afraid. Is it because there's too many of us? Now, if I could throw out, that's never really stopped them before because they want attention. And if okay. they don't get attention, then they start getting aggravated and knock louder or close slam the door or something like that. Can you knock on something to let us know that you are present? We know you're here. Would you like to come for us to come back and visit you later? You guys hearing anything out there? No. It's pretty quiet. We had a, a group on here and had a medium in here doing her thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but she was afraid to be in here. So I, I guaranteed her I'd be within 10 feet. Check it out. Think that's it? No, because it was no, because it's right there. Yeah. yeah. Maybe now yeah. you want to make yourself known. Touch one of those little cat balls. Let them go off. Yeah, you guys know what cat balls are. They work very mildly. All you got to do is just touch them. Can make a gauze reading fluctuate. What is your name? I told you mine. As soon as I say that. I heard whispers. See, I told you I keep hearing something, but I don't every time I ask a question and like it responds. No, I heard a whisper like around right here. I heard But it's Georgia Heard a whistle? No. No, a whisper. Oh whisper. Yeah, like somebody. Can you come back again and tell us again what your name was? Can you do it loud and audible? Bang on something. Knock. How about this? Can you do that? I think you can. Can you? Come out and speak to us. I tell you what, when we leave and we keep going, follow us around. Let's, let's quit again. But I'm pretty sure that's not what's setting it off because it's random. Uh, it's too far away, yeah. yeah. How about here? Is there <coughs> anyone here? Speak into the camera so we can hear you. Can you tell us if you're standing by any of one of us? Something back here. And here's where I was told you uh, I was stroke my forearm. It was in here. Uh, I was about where Jose is right now, and I don't know if you have an SLS or not, but we're pointed down the passageway every night again, and we, we often get a, a figure down there. Feel free to come out. We have Bill here, you know who he is. Come out and speak to one of us. Are you in one of these
Got it? Yeah, right next to my brother. Yeah, anyway. Oh, that doesn't sell us. Mm-hmm. He's always in that same spot where he's like he's like peeking around the corner yeah. at you. And down here? Oh yeah, it's on that side. Yeah, peeking out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is there a doorway right there? No? There there there's a there it's kinda of like a, a side passageway. And he's, he'll stand over there and, and peek around the corner at you. There was a major change in the 1950s. That area was not there. Uh, that was put on as, as part of the hurricane bow. Before that, there was an extension out there, but there was a 40 millimeter gun mount up there. So there was a lot of war activity up here. Uh, but who, how many fatalities or anything, I, I don't know. The only fatality I know about comes to me from a, uh, a former shipmate. We were uh, served together on the first ship. He was a, a chief bosun's mate up here that, that made chief while he was here. And he was missing a guy one morning that uh, just didn't show up for muster. And it turned out that later on in the day, they were working and somebody had to get some gear out of that room right there. So he walked over there and found the guy hanging uh, in that room up there. Walk across here and take a look. Now where he was hanging from, I don't know. There's several areas to, that you could do that from. We had another investigation group over here and I was walking past here and I heard somebody say something in here. So I stopped and the, the lady that was running the investigation stopped behind me. She had heard it too. So we all came in here and up there we heard banging and, and it sounded to me like they were putting in a ventilation system, which would have made sense uh, back in the 50s and whatnot, because they put a hurricane bow on there uh, to enclose this area. But before that, it was all open. But when they enclosed it, they had no, no ventilation up here. So I could see people, yard workers or somebody, putting in the ventilation system. But we heard all these sounds of uh, using people working on vents. And every now and again, uh, we would look up there and see somebody that looked like they were peering down at us. Another time, there was a full-body, not, not full-body apparition, a, uh, a uh, stick figure up here, uh, looked like standing there, like he was looking down at us. I'm gonna run, you got your SLS on you? The sounds that were up there sounded like being like that. Yeah, it was, it was metal work. But it was had kind of a hollow sound to it, like you do when you're putting pipes in, ventilation pipe. Yeah. Speaking of which, they're coming here in either May or June. I have to pick it. I'm going to call her up and set a date. A couple of our favorite people. Get it. Nothing? Mm -mm. I'm not getting anything either. Oh, wait. What? Oh, you got somebody. It's like that little red knob up there. 
where they were working at. Because that same team took a picture and they saw somebody like peeking down to there as if they were working on the red nozzle or doing something to it. Are you getting it? I hear something banging up there. Oh. We first came in here, it was very, very dim. But the longer we were in here, the louder it got. Until it got to a certain point, then it started tapering off again. So I guess that's you trying to say for us to get out? Bang louder. Can you bang again? You want us out of your space? Bang it harder. It's up there. I see him. Hit it again. Can I can I see your hand hit it? Hit it. Where'd you go? There you go. This was the junior officer's quarters. Uh, if you got cat balls, we'll put them in selected bunks. Okay. And uh, one of them is, let's see, number 29 over here. Another one is 16. Come back and visit again. Can you tell me which bunk you're in? Which bunk are you in? I'm going to go check out the other one. Hmm. Stop, 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 stop. Do you not want me to go check out the other ones? Do you want me to stay in this one? Presence. You're here. Can you come up and touch me? I'm not afraid of you. It will make me so happy to know that you are here. Over here. Where? Over here where? Over here where? Did you just turn my camera off right now? Illegal. <laughs> what is illegal? Was this locker open? Yeah, uh, people open them. Okay. This is part of a tour route, and they open up everything. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I just keep thinking I hear plastic. That's why I was wondering, like, the plastic was moving. Okay. Uh, 
You got a K right K two red light on over here. It's real cool right behind us. A nice breeze of air. It's like a, a breeze. Come stand right here. Can you feel it? No, wait, is it coming from here? I heard footsteps. Can you tell from where? Red lining right here. Yeah, <laughs> it had red lining on the other side too. I didn't know there was beds right here too. Yeah. I have to turn it back on because it kicked off. Is there anyone in here? Come speak to me. We're friends. Are we? That's good to know. I would like to be your friend. But you know, friends tell each other their names. Like I said, mine's with Pearl. Mine's is Pearl. What's yours? Are you male or female? Spike, where are you? No, Spike. Yeah. We've are been getting some blips. Uh, we've have, had a couple red lines. Yeah. Are you a child? Okay, my dearie. Still in these bunks. So none of the cat box went off? Nope, not yet. Yeah, it's, it's air conditioned out there. Yeah, it feels good. Just that bunk, huh?
Is the light too bright in here for you? Would you like for us to turn off the lights? Your name. You said my name? My name is Pearl. What's yours? Are you stepping off your bunk now that we turned off the lights? Are you moving in your bed? <gasps> Something touched my leg. Is that you? I'm not afraid of you. You can feel free. If you want to touch me, I won't run. asking you. Come speak to me. What brushed my leg? Are you on this side? Or are you on the other side? Because I heard a thump. There's two of y'all here, where are y'all at? This is what I always get most of the time, is that they're always here, but... say George, but instead of, ah, whatever. <laughs> we'll call him Jeff. Oh, yeah. I'm getting footsteps right over here, guys. Could there have been us out here? I, it stepped right in here. I thought I heard it there at first, and then I said, okay, I'm gonna stop moving, and then it stopped here. Was that you? It was like, uh, see, because I'm making it here, but it was right here, right in there. Hmm. Like it was coming this way. It started there and I said, okay, maybe I'm just hearing things. Where are you at? What did it say? It's too far for me.
Nancy, this is her favorite passage. Oh, yeah. The storm was literally going And the locks going down were going this way, and then they'd stop, and they'd start going this way. And I was with my husband, my daughter, and my niece, and we really thought it was like so. I mean, at the same time, the long house was going So it seemed, it seemed like it was all staged. Mm -hmm. Well, then what happened is we came back at the end of the drive. Still going. And it was like boom, 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 boom. Are those doors locked? They're locked. And there's nothing behind here. There's nothing that would make it go. Um, so what happens is, lately we hear it would be. Mm -hmm. There's nobody here. Um, what's happened through investigations, I found there was a Tommy Samples. It was in the room over there. It was Tommy that would move the locks. Well, Tommy since has gone up to heaven. Aww. For what? Yes. The locks, it, then there was Sam Holtz, who was also killed by the Kamikaze. He was supposed to be doing it, but now it has totally stopped. So every time when we come in here, it's the first thing I do is go see if the locks are moving. They have been moving for quite a while. For a while. So it's like, like no one's in charge of it anymore since they left. Wow. But I mean, at that time, like I said, my daughter, and we've got some pictures, some videos. It started on December 22nd. Uh, the first most serious attack on this ship was a torpedo hit right below here. And if you're wondering what the torpedo looked like, this is a sample. Oh, yeah, those, they lost two people off yeah. the fantail because the force of the explosion knocked them over the side. And that's the fantail out there? Yes.
Now this is set up because we have a Camp Lex where uh, children can come aboard and spend the night and they're to, to, you know with the adults and all that stuff. So this is more for recreation for the, the uh, adults. When the ship was active, this was the chief petty officer's mess. And they would have steel tables in here where they would sit down and eat their chow. And then a lounge is where the office is right now. But this was for chief petty officers. Where my meter went all the way to 116. Okay. Uh, but there's no transformer around at all. The first time we had an investigation here, I was walking around with my K2, trying to get stuff. And as I walked over here, because I had heard a noise over here, there was like someone there and they knocked on the door. Nothing. So in my head, you know, and I walked away. Everything started going on. The ale was locked at the time and Bill opened it up. He cut the bolt. And we can't go back here because it's so rusty. So if you step in there, you're going to go right through it. Go right through it. That's probably one of the scariest encounters I've had. So if there's anyone in here, can you make a noise for us? Pull the door. Two people I found in here are Zach and Larry. Zach and Larry, are you in here? I thought I heard something right Whoa. now. I thought he said no. You hear that? Yeah. Please move back. Please move back. Yeah, I, I came here and I said, Zach and Larry, are you here? And I thought I heard somebody say no. What did you hear? Whenever she said, is there someone here? That said, please move back right away. Oh. Because I was coming towards this way. Zach or Larry, is that you? Larry, of the two of them, Larry is the womanizer. Larry is the womanizer? Is yeah. Off, right? <laughs> Larry's the womanizer, huh? Mine started going off too, Bill. Yeah. As soon as you said that. This one we, we had a guest on a tour that was yeah. very attractive, and poor Larry just would not leave that girl alone. Picture back there, Bill. Sorry. The picture. But, yeah. Can you move one of these doors, or just walk around for us? What is this? Just a little uh, couch area. That was a uh, Master Chief eating area. Army. Oh. Army. Who's in this room? I'm going to have a seat. Can you come have a seat next to me? Come talk to me. Come tell me what your name is. Are you in this room? Are you near one of us? <laughs> Come sit down in one of these chairs and let me hear you sit down.
Your name Raymond? That's a new name. What was I calling him, Larry? Wealthy. He said wealthy. Are you talking about me? <laughs> <laughs> Can you give us some of that wealth, Raymond? Talk to me through that app. We're going to continue on. Feel free to follow us. Okay? Anyway, I was sitting in a chair there, and I'm kind of watching Vanessa walk in, and she gets about this far, not all the way in, and then she throws her hands up and starts backing out. And about that time, the stuff that the gel was using over here just went ape. And uh, to this day, I'll ask Vanessa, what caused you to back out with your hands up? And she can't remember doing that. Really? Yeah. She, she does, has no idea. In this room? In this room. I can, I can sense that, <coughs> like there's something here, but I, I didn't sense anything threatening or anything. It was, it was calm. It told me to run. It told no, me to run now. No. The, the only thing that we've had was uh, over in that far left corner mm -hmm. is uh, we had an investigation team in here, two females, mm -hmm. and they just kept looking over that way, kept looking over there. And uh, they said, something's over there, and I just don't like it. Yeah. But anyway, we had actually come up the other way, and, and uh, the first female took a picture, which I'll show you. Uh, once I learn how to operate this... <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, right here. And we were coming up through this to, to this other door. Mm -hmm. and you see that red right there? That's because we had a red light in here uh, uh, going. But they saw something here. Okay. And I I couldn't I couldn't. Here? I, yeah, in the door. In the doorway. And I, I, I could, I'd say yes, and then I'd say no, and then I didn't. So we have some professional photographers here, and I went up there and asked them, and they, you know, there were three of them there, mm -hmm. and all three of them said, oh yeah, he's right there. He looks like there's a face right there, yep, yep. and there's the body, and, they, and they, there's the legs. Yeah, they said they see the shoulder, a hand, uh -huh. and his leg. Uh -huh. I see it, I see his eyes. Yep. Anyway, that is the area that they like were he's complaining got about. Short haircut. See him? Oh yeah, like a mist. Is it like yeah, kind of like a mist? But uh, it also looks like he's got his hand on the rail. Oh, yeah. Oh. Be in this area. Matter of fact, you've already been. Look behind that lady. Is that something standing? Oh, yeah. right behind yeah. her face. Wow. It looks like a white eyeball. Yeah. There's a. There's the head. Yep. The eye. The eyebrow. Then. Like that's her ear, but it kind of looks like her nose, where her ear's coming up. Yeah, hard nose. to tell. And I'm not big on orbs, but the captain caught this on his camera, on security oh, camera. Oh, I've seen it. Yeah. It went, look. Yeah. But I that, that believe was, in orbs. Well, I was down to see where that light is right there. Uh -huh. I was down there actually doing a paranormal investigation with two uh, brothers out of Kingsville, and their stuff started going off. Uh -huh. But anyway, I got uh, called the next day asking if I knew anything about that because he had a, a motion detection camera, mm -hmm. passed him infrared. That this, so this thing, then it lit off. And so this thing had sufficient mass to turn that thing on. Oh. And, but you, the captain went into his office the next day, which was right over here, mm -hmm. and everything was taken off the desk, off of the walls. <gasps> it, yeah, somebody had trashed it. But he checked the camera and he saw that, but there was nothing, nobody coming in right at that, that door. Is that coming from his office? No, it's, it's just coming out of the, oh, okay. but where it's going to is you. nothing. There's, there's no uh -huh. way, no exit. Yeah. 
the female head. This woman was taking selfies with her child mm -hmm. and taking rapid fire. So that was taken, then this one was taken, oh. and then the next one, but she wasn't there. The lady. Yeah, but look at her. She like, what does she have on her head? It's like way, way back like in the... Sp supposedly she drowned. We contacted her one night. Uh, her name is Layla, and she had no idea why she was here. Oh, this is out of cell number two when nobody was in there. And the young lady that was in there was scratched on her wow. left bicep. And the next night, she went in there and got scratched on her shoulder. And where was that at? In brig number two, uh, brig cell number two. We'll be down there. Oh. Or, yeah, whatever the need is. That the, but, but they had, uh, you can see where they could cook and stuff like that. And, Anyway, this is for special diets. Oh, okay. Thank you, sir. You know, I don't know what it was at one time, but this uh, linen locker over here. We were sitting in there and we saw somebody cross the window walking from here over to there. But you can look in there, and there's there's no room to do that. Oh, yeah, there's like little shelves right there. Huh? Yeah. So, but I don't know what that room was years ago. Oh. X-ray. What was that room? I think that was X-ray. Oh, that one. Oh, room? like a dentist. Oh. What is it? It was like a. Oh, just, oh, uh, yeah, just, lab it was just the laboratory. Lab laboratory. Yeah, that's what that was. Yeah, that's what that was. Cologne. What you got? Cologne. 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 A place in France. What else? Which one are you they, they smell something out here. Do you guys smell anything? I do right here. Like what? I don't smell cologne. I smell like a uh, like a medicine smell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, I, that, I get a lot of that in your like medical a, smell. Like an anesthetic. Uh, anesthetic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like when you walk into a doctor's office, yeah. kind of. Yeah. I can see that too. You're here, bud? Yes. Bro. What? I thought I just saw a shadow. Where? Oh, down the stairs? Yeah. Like halfway down the stairs. There's nothing down there though, right? No, uh, let me see. It's very lonely here. It's very lonely here. You did see somebody there. Oh, well, they had bakery, a lot of voids, which is just empty spaces. Uh, it looks like there's just like garbage or something down there. Sit and talk. Sit and talk? You want to sit and talk? Are you lonely down there? Come up here and join us. Oh, is that the spirit talking? Uh-huh. It's doing pretty good tonight. She is, like saying exactly where we're going or what we're doing. It's The answers are what we're saying, what we're talking about. Okay, come follow us so you won't be lonely. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wonder if these sailors had some tiny feet back then. Well, they were smaller. <laughs> the, the average height of the average male was five and a half feet tall back then. Wow. It's, it's about three or four inches taller now. I talked to people that actually served down here, and they, they believed. They, they, they said, yeah, Charlie was a regular. 
Let's they be didn't, friends. didn't see him all the time. But uh, uh, if you were really in a bind mechanically, mm -hmm. he could come up and help. He, he could never touch anything himself, but he could talk you through it. Wow. Anyway, a lot of people talking, and, and uh, uh, years ago, I had the pleasure of uh, giving. Y'all didn't hear that? No. no. Was like it a, a giggle? No, no. Like, like a. No, I didn't hear that. But it sounded like if it might have been coming up from there. Like clearing their, their throat or something? No, I heard like a. More like a kind of like a growl. Yeah, almost like a growl. <laughs> yeah, it was like that, because okay. I heard the echo. But anyway, uh, the chief engineer was a lieutenant out. He, he, he was a junior officer, but, but nobody messes with because he came up through the ranks, okay? And uh, good, they're, you meet an LDO uh, lieutenant, and they know what they're doing. But anyway, uh, he, I was giving him, uh, he was getting emotional but because he, uh, he couldn't remember a lot. He was losing his memory. He was getting close to 100. And, uh, but he did talk about a young man down here that he talked to, which was unusual back then because usually officers and enlisted didn't talk. Uh, but he would come down, you know, nobody's going to tell this El uh, Mustang lieutenant that you can't talk to, you know, come here, boy, you know, that sort of thing. And anyway, it's, uh, uh, he mentioned, he, t he talked about a guy that he couldn't remember his name, but it, 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 he was a lot like Charlie's described. And he couldn't remember all the physical description, but he said, you guy hand this guy anything, mechanical, and he could, if he could figure it out in a heartbeat. Anyway, uh, here I've run spirit box activity. And uh, anyway, sometimes you get amazing things, sometimes you don't. Uh, but I was given a, a special tour to a, uh, a ghost tour to uh, one of the board members and his family. Anyway, uh, normally when I do a spirit box activity, I'd, I'd introduce some of the people around, mm -hmm. and, uh, but I forgot to, okay? Anyway, we're talking and we're actually getting some good stuff. And it was kind of funny actually, because at, at the one time it sounded like somebody farted <laughs> in, inside the spirit box. And I said, sounds, like, sounds to me like somebody in there's got some gas. Here. And he said, smell me. Oh. I'm serious. But anyway, the, the, the board member went to leave and the spirit box said, Bad spirits here. Uh, the, the spirit box said, when the board member went to leave, the spirit box said, goodbye, Raul. Wow. Yeah, that was his name. Wow. And it's like, holy cow, you know, how would he know that? That's too funny. What? Oh, you want the cat ball? I don't know what down here is the agitating that thing. We never really get activity down here. Never? No. I wonder if they made it. Remember when CW uh, Channel was, was here? Mm -hmm. uh, I had them down here, and they had their medium yeah. over here talking about what she was feeling and I was standing over there right between her and a friend of mine Katie Stafford investigator that was down there with the spirit box and hearing what he was getting and it was so remarkable you know it wasn't at the same time but it was so remarkable uh, similarity that it was but anyway I was also over there with the sound lady because everybody was, was mic'd up and anyway she's over there and all of a sudden she looks up and gives me the funniest look and then looks back down again and so I asked her what happened, and she said, well, I'm watching, and he said, she said, all of a sudden there was a huge power drain, battery drain, oh. but then she said, while I'm looking, it shot back up again. She says, that's never done, it, usually if it dies, it dies. Right. Weird. It said it never regenerates itself. It died and it came right back up. Yeah, but that, that's why she gave me such a funny look. Yeah. Is this where we got lost at? Yeah. This don't look like it, right? Yeah, this is it. This is it? I was I couldn't I couldn't find a staircase. I, I was we were, came down at one of the parts that kind of looked like this, and I couldn't find the staircase. And I was like, "Where do we go?" And then and I was like, oh. "And it's on tape, and we we you, you failed your navigation course for the day." Uh, I did. <laughs>
the break. I, I kind of figured that. I was like, it looks really dark down here. Yeah. This would have been the predominant. Now, the captain didn't put anybody in the break that he didn't want to or didn't have to, mm -hmm. simply because uh, when you put somebody in the brig, you lose them off the watch bill, you lose them off of the, you know, his work. Uh -huh. And uh, not only do you lose him, but you lose one of your petty officers because they have to stand watch down here. Oh. Yeah, so, you know, every sailor is important. And if, he, if he's missing, then you got to take up the slack. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, what we get out of here is a lot of murmuring uh -huh. and whispering. Simply because uh, the captain, when they put him in, the Navy and the Marine Corps at the time were the only two services that could award three days on bread and water. Uh -huh. oh. That's all they got was bread and water. Wow. And, but they were also not allowed to talk. They were not allowed to read. There was no furniture in there. So it's, it was just a plane, this plane like this, like nothing yeah. in it? Nothing until five minutes before taps, then they would bring a rack in here, a bunk, and, and hook it up, and so he would sleep, but at, at Reveille, he'd get up and they'd take the rack on out so he had no place to sit. Wow. Turn, turn your out. See if somebody would come in here. Yeah. yeah, you can check it out, but uh, what, what we mostly get out of here is whispering. And I think it's because, you know, you get some petty officer that's already standing double watches over here. Right. You know, maybe he's, he's not as, being as alert as he should. And uh, so they want to talk, but they can't do that. Except. To next door to yeah, each other? Yeah, whatever. Okay. Got it. Did I hear that? What? You can't do that. He just said that. Did you just say that? Yeah. I didn't say can't do that. Can't, no, I can't do that. I heard um, I didn't say that, did I? He said. But it sounded like, like a whisper, I can't do that. Like he was saying it right after him? Like he was saying it while he was talking. Oh. I heard, can't do that. And it come out and you can't. Yeah, but I, I used full voice, I didn't whisper anything. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he, he heard, was talking loud. While you were talking, and I was trying to figure, did you say that? But I heard like as you were talking in between. Whatever you're saying about okay. the bunks, I was like, can't do that. The one really emphatic thing happened was we had uh, uh, a bunch of investigators for, come from San Antonio. I think San Antonio was just full of investigators. <laughs> but they had uh, 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 several people come down on a bus and then they were going to go back on a bus, but they'd uh, get on the bus at midnight and head on back. Uh, but about 11.15 or so that night, I had a woman come up and said she really wanted to investigate the brig, but she was never able to find it. You know, we showed her, but, but she, she lost track. And so anyway, she asked if I could bring her to the, to the uh, brig. It was her and four guys. Anyway, the four guys had already packed their gear, so they were standing at the end of the passage. <coughs> and she came in here, and she had an obelisk, brand name obelisk, and it was on, on voice. Anyway, I thought, well, I always thought those were $600 waste of time because I, I never saw one that worked. Anyway, I was over there uh, with, the, with the guys, and she was in here with the door closed, and I could hear her talking, and I, thought, and I could hear the obelisk replying, and I thought, holy crap, that thing's right on, you know, to what she was asking. But at one point, she said, don't touch me. And so I thought maybe I better check on this, and it, it had happened so fast. I said, "Don't touch me!" And then all of a sudden she came barreling on out of here, pissed. I mean, she was she was hot. I said, and she's pointing her finger in here. I told you, don't touch me. Of course, the first thing I do is look in here, mm -hmm. and there's nobody. Uh, anyway, I asked her once I got her calmed down, and she said she was in here, and something came up and touched her arm, and uh, she said she just did not like to be touched, especially by people that she didn't know. <laughs> and I guess especially with people she couldn't even see. Right. Anyway, touched her arm and that's when she said, don't touch me. But then he took his hand off her arm and then ran it down her spine. And that's what tripped her trigger and she came flying out of here. This is the infamous cell number two. This is where Blakely's got scratched a couple of times. You, you're going to try it? OK, 
Okay, I'm going to close the door. I'm not going to lock it or anything, but close it. Matter of fact, these doors were never locked. They never locked? That, don't you love that sound? I know, that sounds horrible. Doesn't that sound horrible when they... Uh, I, imagine if, I imagine if you're sitting in there, it sounds... Oh, my God, that sounds horrible. Anyway, it would be like this. They locked us in here. Okay, well, I'm just going to demonstrate here. This was a toggle pin that went in there, and that's all it was. It wasn't a lock. Because if the ship had a fire or emergency or something like that, you had oh, to really... Oh, okay, Tommy. <laughs> Is there anybody in here with me? Just checking to make sure there's no one in here. I heard a yes. Can you... Stop it. I'm gonna take this bar down. something but I can't describe it. Are you in here with me? Or are you next door? Where are you at? Most of the time they like to hide behind me. What was that first voice you got? It said, it feels like something's touching my back, hold on. It sounded like it said yes. Is someone behind me? Move around in here so I can hear you. Don't try to hide, okay? Then I heard okay. Female. Did they bring female? Out there? You know, that's the second time I heard about a female prison, but, but by the time we had females on here, these brigs were not certified because they didn't have head facilities or anything. And you, it, it used to be that you could throw them in basically anything you wanted to. But then they came on out and, you know, with a kinder, gentler Navy and stuff like that, and you had to have the brigs certified. Well, by the time females got here, the brigs were not certified. So there would not have been any prisoners in here. So was there a female in here? For the second time I've been down here where somebody reported a female possible prisoner in here, but that would not have worked. I said, don't be afraid. And I said, okay. She said, okay. Maybe you feel like you can't communicate on your own? But 
that hurt you. I want it to drown out your voice. Can you use this app to tell me what your name is? Why are you still stuck here? This app like went totally silent. touched you on your back there's no burning or anything right uh, no mm -mm. Okay. It's, it was just like a light like it was just like it, it kind of just it just kind of like like this it, it, it didn't make contact but on my skin is there only i don't have you putting cat balls out here should i put a red pot out here how many do they have is it just two or three Two or three what? With four. Oh, there's four. Oh, they, they, had, they, they had five two-person cells. Uh -huh. Those last two doors were taken off and a hole cut in them for picture taking. Oh. Yeah. I, didn't know. I thought it was just these two. Oh, no, there's a total of three. Oh. Now, when the brig was decertified, they, these were used mostly for storage. Oh, okay. Oh, I see they took the doors off. And that door? And she looked over here and she just freaked because she said there was somebody over here that had his head so tall that his head was up towards the uh, overhead and said such massive, first thing she mentioned was his massive shoulders. But we found out later that that was all, all show. Uh, Remember the one that... Yeah. The well, we, we, came, we came in here one time and it was really, really dark and we didn't realize he was in here. So we came on in and all of a sudden we felt something rush past us but it was him because the, we couldn't see the massive figure, so we, you know, it's, but he didn't, just didn't want to be in here with people. Y'all were in here. Yeah, in his so he face. ran out. <laughs> he said, y'all in my space. And what was this room? There was also a print shop. Now, why that door is built like that, I got I know, know, that's weird, isn't it? It is. You know, it's got, over here they got a lot of demonstrations on. And I don't know how they printed from this stuff. Oh, 
you know, how, how that would copy to anything. But apparently it did. Oh, oh yes. I used to work. I used to work in a print shop. I remember these. Yeah. You put these on. Um, you use those, and then they use <laughs> to do the film on them. And then that other, they would use them to put on the machines, and then that's how the guys would run the stuff. I do remember these things. <laughs> how funny! I forgot all about these. And then they would throw these away. And a lot of people that uh, I guess would collect aluminum, they yeah. would get them out the trash. Yeah, but the, the one that. thing that I have in here that, that I've only seen once is a shadow person will stand in there. Uh -huh. And then once he realizes he's been seen, will run and go, in, go into the office there. Yeah, well, you can see there's no way in or out. Now, even with my bad hearing, what, I would, what would happen is every now and again I'd, I'd be here and we could hear talking above here, both down and here. Wow. I'm going up there and checking, there's no radios, no nothing. Matter of fact, it's the uh, staff gymnasium up there. Gymnasium? But, yep. It was something that, uh, Former captain we had, Rocco Montesano, he built for free. He just got donations. Rocco could get, everybody loved Rocco. So he said, I'd like to get some gym equipment. You know, it was old stuff, but it was still usable. And uh, he got that for the, for the staff and volunteers because he knew how it was to work with the public. I personally have a philosophy that 95% of the people I work with are super fantastic people. There's 4% that I'm gonna to try to finish this tour as quick as I can. Right. And there's one percent I'd rather just take the hangar deck and drop kick their ass right over the rail. <laughs> but he knew that, he knew that. And so he had a, a gym put down there and says, look, if you run across a really nasty person, just bite, bite, smile at them, and then back off and then come on down and work out for five, 15 minutes, whatever you need to get it out of your system before you go back to the public. Mm -hmm. Hey, that would sound like because you get them endorphins working. Well, we, we can check out the gym when we go back up. And look, without any light, look how dark it is in here. It is really dark. Is there anyone in here? It's like that real quiet, we don't even have to hear anything, and then it's just out of nowhere. Pretty quiet. Pretty. Yeah. We done? Yeah. Now when you go back up this ladder, kind of lean forward a little oh. bit. I smell perfume. Yeah, we have a uh, deodorizer over oh, here. Oh, okay, okay, that's no perfect. This is nice. Well, um, one day I was up here to check that out because apparently that odor was going from here to one deck down, and I thought, how could that be? Because that's a solid steel deck. And so uh, I came up here to check it out one day, and I, I, I was the only one in here. And I was over there, and I heard a clink, like somebody with the weights. Uh -huh. So I came over here to look, and right about, uh, well over there a little further, there was a, a full shadow person that once he saw me, he ran all the way back there, and of course he was gone. But uh, have you got a K2? Yeah, it just, it just going ape over here. So and there, there's, there's it nothing. you and it was trying to leave. There's nothing over here that would, should do that. It's, it's only going to yellow right now, but it, it, it usually goes to red. But it's getting something and we don't know why. So it's, did you just say why? Why? What? No, did you just yeah, say why? Okay. There you go. Uh, so other things that we've had happen, there you go, was that punching bag right there is a hundred pound bag, okay? 
And I was in here one time and it just started swaying on its own. And I thought, well, that's freaking odd. Wow. Also, uh, some, some guys came down here to use the gym and they said that this 45 pound, yes, yeah, this is this, the 45 pounds, said if this was moving, the bar wasn't moving, but the dumb, the, the plate was. And they just could not figure that out. I mean, but number one, you got air conditioner right there, but it's not near enough to move that. Have we checked anybody in here working out? This was the, uh, this wasn't always the gym. The, the, this ship didn't have a gym. Really? Yeah. You would think that it would. No. Back then, when I was in, uh, everything was body weight. You did push-ups and sit-ups and, and pull-ups and stuff like that. It was all, it was all body weight. Uh, now, when we got females on here, they created their own gym, which was probably the first gym on the ship. Anyway, Rocco got all this, you know, donated. That's pretty awesome. It is. But like I said, everybody everybody loved Rocco. He died about three years ago of uh, uh, esophageal cancer. And he's the one that used to run this ship? Yep. The guy that, when we were standing up in the dark, up in the uh, hangar deck, uh -huh. that guy that came on up and st uh, started talking to him, uh -huh. that's uh, Steve Banta. He's the current captain. Watch those things don't trip on them. Or Some, whatever, or yeah. <laughs> I was like, where did that come from? Yeah, it crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And um, like I said, well, we, we, we've, we've, we've checked all this stuff, the, all, the, all the alarm systems and everything else, and it, it's not triggering that. As a matter of fact, so far away, it couldn't trigger it. What was here before? Ship's the, library. Library? So they could be in here studying. This is pretty neat. That's nice. I looked that up. So do you ever hear anything besides what you see? The boxing bag and the uh, bag? I don't. Well, outside the clank and stuff like yeah. that, I don't think I've heard anything. But when I saw that shadow person, and he took, he, I mean, he was fast. It was like a blur. <laughs> and so I went on over there and shined the light. Shine, yeah, I was over in that area and shined the light, and there's no way out from that area. But that's the way shadow people are on here, yeah. is that um, they'll, they, if you kind of try to come on up to them, they'll just disappear. Wow. They may still be there energy-wise, but they're not, not apparent. There's a lot of aviation related stuff in here. This is a storeroom. Uh -huh. But when she became a training carrier, they didn't need it. So it, all that stuff was emptied out. And so when the females came aboard, they just took over the space and made it their own gymnasium. She could still see some of the weights here and weight bench. Anyway, we just now refer to this as the female gym. But uh, Nancy, being the researcher she is, she found two brothers in here. Uh, th I say three brothers. Two had been killed in Vietnam a year apart. They, they were on the river patrols. Mm -hmm. One was, I can't remember, but it was about a year apart. The third Ward brother, their last name was Ward, uh, had never been in the military. And he died in 69, I think it was. But he came here because this is where his brothers were. So he'd never had any relation to the military, but he was here with his brothers. Wow. Now, why two Vietnam vets would die and come here is anybody's guess. You know, but they were here. Yeah. Anyway, there's another uh, ghost in here that, that plays with us every now and again, screws with us. Uh -huh. So you never know exactly what. Anyway, he said, because uh, we haven't met, contacted the wards in a long time. But anyway, Gerard, his first name, shows up and says that they voluntarily moved on.
Oh. We talked to him. Yeah, they, they just wanted to yeah. to go, be with family or wherever, whatever. All the brothers. Yeah, all the brothers. They all went together. Oh. But I thought it was interesting that you would have two that died in combat on here that oh. was never attached to this ship, and a brother never served be aboard here. Wow, it is. They just came through. Yep. The screwiest thing, uh, George saw it, but out in the passageway. Normally it's dark in here. I was uh, say, better, it looks dark over there. Yeah, I, I flipped off the light earlier and somebody did it. Most of these lights I turned off earlier, but they somebody came in and turned them back on again. But out in that passageway, he looked and he saw half of lower half of a person, the legs just run from left to right real fast. And so George went on out there, and the, and the, and the guest that, we was, that was here went, saw it also and ran out there. What was interesting was about a week later, George wasn't even here, and his whole new guest and everything else, and the guest saw that oh, same thing, and he came man. up and reported almost word for word what George had told me. Wow. Did they describe, like... Could they describe what the the hat on in the lower half? No, it just it was like shadow, you know, just oh. just just black. Mm -hmm. uh, Gerard later said that was him. He was mess oh. he, he was messing with us. He just wanted them to yeah. see him. That's so funny. We had a membership night in the fall of last year, and. Uh, uh, if if you have, if you're a member that you know you can come here and spend the night and mm -hmm. and I do a, a I used to do just a paranormal talk mm -hmm. but I said oh, here's here's some of the stuff that happened now let's go look and uh, one of them was a little girl eight years old Hope and she's carrying a cat ball okay I said what is that she says that's my ghost hunting tool <laughs> you know and so I, I took and tried it and it didn't even work so I gave her one that worked mm -hmm. okay. And uh, anyway, she said, can I be your helper? I said, sure. I, I'm 75 and I don't lean over well now. Mm -hmm. you know, so, but she would get take the cat balls and place them for me and everything else, then pick them on up. So when she left, I gave her two more cat balls. Aww. Yeah. And she just, oh man, I mean, it was like a treasure. Their ghost but, hunting yeah, tools. That was her ghost hunting tool. Eight, eight years old and believe in ghosts. Well, she was good though. She never got frightened over anything. Wow, and they—I I think they can see stuff that we can't see. Oh, obviously, yeah, clearly. Mm -hmm. Years old, as part of a uh, paranormal investigation, I said, "I'm not real comfortable with this," and Mama kept reassuring me, saying, "She, she does this. She, she watches all the shows. She does this." I had the best time with that that little girl because, wow. yeah, she she studied this stuff, mm -hmm. and she was into it, and nothing's going to scare her. Ship's engine. It. This is for emergency power. We got this and one aft. Um, but anyway, not to get technical or anything. But I had five women that uh, were in a church raffle, and they for free tickets to the for this tour. And um, so they won. And so I was bringing them down there. Anyway, one woman beat me in here. I stepped in, and she said, "Well, what would you say?" I said, "I didn't say anything." And I said, "What did it sound like?" It said, sounded like when you came in here, you said, oh my. I said, well, oh my is not my vocabulary. <laughs> WTF is closer to it. <laughs> but she said, no, they, and then it oh, turned out the woman that was behind me also heard somebody, a male voice say, oh my. And saw them that, coming in. Yeah, again, that's that's not my verbiage, so. <laughs> and, oh, my. oh, we had a, uh, lady she's no longer here but she used to work in marketing <coughs> brand new and she had to come up here and check on some volunteer fire or on some firefighters that were up here for training and she hadn't heard from them so she came up to check on them only to find out that they would already left the ship and she told me that she, when she while she was standing here and trying to listen said the deck rose about an inch to an inch and happened and dropped all of a sudden uh, I said, well, the deck won't rise because it's it's welded. But I said, these gratings will rise. And But she ran, I'm going to say, about 150 pounds. And for something to raise, raise that grating mm -hmm. that far and then drop it, had to be pretty powerful. Yeah. Did they look pretty heavy? Well, the grate itself wasn't, but the, the 150 pounds standing on it would have been. Oh. Now, these, these you can raise because they got a little handholds down there you can raise those but again trying to raise that and that her weight 
I say 150 pounds, I think I'm being generous. <laughs> Maybe because of the energy that's in there. Yeah. I don't know. That that thing hasn't hasn't worked in many many years. Is it a generator? It is. It's, it's a generator, but it was only used in case we lost primary power. Oh. Okay. We could head on up to the volunteer lounge. George, this is uh, the chief engineer's office, and sometimes we'll be walking through here at night when he's gone, and we'll hear activity in there. So this last weekend, from Friday to Monday, I put in um, motion cam cameras in there to see what I could catch. And Friday night, we actually heard stuff in there, so I said, boy, I hope that the camera caught all that. The camera didn't catch anything. Uh, that, so that's why I think what happens in here is all residual. Uh -huh. You know, it sounds like stuff moving, but nothing's actually moving, just the sound of it moving. Kind of makes sense? Is that yeah. why you saw the orbs too? No? No. Oh, okay. The orbs, remember the, the, the commissary, the Genoc area? Uh -huh. uh, the deck above that is where the, the orb was. Now, I got a lot of people talk about orbs, but to me, orbs got to meet very specific requirements. But I don't just take any flying bug as a... As an orb. Yeah. yeah. Where I talked about fire room number one, where we looked down and saw that, that mural and all that other stuff. Uh, I was in that valve repair because we heard... Matter of fact, that call, I, was, I caught that, uh, that uh, SLS figure. Uh -huh. And Jesus and his brother were right behind me and somebody else, I think George, they said, while you were doing that, you weren't paying attention, but there was an orb going around my body. And they saw it in the dark without any uh -huh. other light. So, so it was one of my requirements is that it has to be lit from within. Right. Right. But they said there was no other source of light except it, okay. and it was circling your body. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good word. Saw a full-bodied shadow person just standing there. Wow. And he didn't look solid, but he looked enough to where they could tell what it was. Uh -huh. And said he was just, just watching. Just watching it. Yeah, but, but all four people saw the same thing. They, they were right. together. Right, oh, right here. Wow. Yeah, I would say since we got out, it's been going off. Well, it's going to go off. Because of those electric yeah. yeah. okay. Those are transformers. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's shake. That's what shook. Yeah. Okay. I was like, what was that noise? And they have a shower and everything. Yeah, this was the one officer's stateroom. He was in charge of the operations department aboard the ship, which would have made him uh, probably the fourth senior officer on the ship. So he had a stateroom all his own. Mm -hmm. Now, this didn't look nothing like it. It would have been much nicer, uh, but he would have had his bunk and a second bunk kind of like this, even though there's one officer. They did that during wartime because he was a commander, a senior officer. Mm -hmm. And if there was a shipwreck or a sunken ship and they picked somebody up out of the water that was a commander, he could sleep in here. Okay. You kind of understand what I'm mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, until such time as this, he could leave the ship. Uh, but this is the guy that does, does not like people invading his space. Uh, again, I did have a talk with him and that, that helped settle things. Yeah, I felt real uncomfortable when I came down here yeah. earlier. I came in and I was like, oh, okay, I'm just going to use the bathroom. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it was during one of our experience things that I was walking up the passageway to see how things were going. And I saw two young ladies leave here to go across the passageway. And one of them had a flashlight out and she was shining it like like this, trying to see something, but uh -huh. her chin prevented her, you know. And so uh, after, she said that she just felt a burning in there. So I looked, and she had a, a not a low cut, but I mean, you know, a moderately cut uh, blouse, and you could see a red mark go across just underneath her, right, oh. right there where her neck is. Did they come out of here? Yeah. And uh, anyway, I was talking, and, and they clammed up on me all of a sudden, and so I think that they were because they oh. knew they weren't supposed to provoke, and I think that they were. They did. In almost almost every case, now 
likely something different, but that happens in the brig. Uh -huh. People in the brig don't pay attention to anybody. But anyway, uh, uh, what'd you hear? Uh, uh, what'd you hear? Talking. Okay. I just had a report today. I heard something back there. They were talking. I heard, I heard, like I heard a, a female talking. I heard like a cry back here. Like a... I, I, I thought I kind of heard like a whimper. Yeah, yeah something. I did. I don't, I, That's what I heard, a whimper. It came from, I thought it came from out here, but I just heard it. I just don't know where it came from. I heard it back there. Like a... When he was talking about, he was telling his story about the two girls. Yeah. So, stuff like that, but I've had a talk with them and I, we haven't really had problems since, but people still feel an unease coming in mm -hmm. here. Now, when I leave, it takes me about a half hour, 45 minutes to get home. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'd like to come in with an aching bladder and mm -hmm. relieve myself before I get on the road so I don't right. have to stop. I was in there one time and just merely whizzing away. And something came up and just spoke like one or two syllables right in my ear, but it was enough to shock me. Right. You know. Couldn't, I didn't hear I, what I, it I, I don't know what he said because it was so sudden and so so short. Uh -huh. that I couldn't really make out, but, but it just, so something spoke in my, right in my ear. Wow. Now we had a, uh, an accountant uh, retire, but uh, she uh, she was a senior staff member, so she had an office with it, its own head. So she had her own private bathroom, uh, but it was being repaired one time, and she had to go. So she decided to come on over here, and she's in there, and she you can you can lock that door, and she close this one. Uh, but she's in there, and then, and then all of a sudden I get a call from Jackie, saying she went in there and she was doing her lady thing. And somebody, some guy started talking to her while she was sitting on the pot. She couldn't see him, you know. And it's like, where the hell did he come from? But, but she's trying not to agitate the guy. Mm -hmm. But she finishes what she's doing, then getting the hell out of here. And so she gave me a call, and I came on up, and I said, I've already had experience in there, you know. Uh, did she make out what he was telling her? No. Uh, sometimes they, you'll hear these voices, but you just can't. Right. You know they're speaking English, you just yeah. can't understand what they're saying. It's just kind of like a whisper, kind of, most of the time. Collecting money at the gate. They also keep figures uh, on attendance, uh -huh. which is very important to the board members. Anyway, the uh, lady that used to be in charge, is now retired, was told by Captain Rocco to uh, get numbers from a certain period mm -hmm. and take them to the wardroom for a board off uh, meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when you talk about board members, everybody gets nervous, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Anyway, she said she had the uh, all the paperwork and everything, and she's walking up the passageway, but couldn't, couldn't. She got so rattled she couldn't even tell where it was. I said uh, she was going through there and she was flipping through the papers to make sure that she had what. But she was like everybody else; she's very aware of these. Of these things. Anyway, she got on up here, and she was slowing down, but she saw a pair of black shoes and white trousers go from the uh, right to left. Okay, be here left to right. Mm -hmm. And so she stopped and said, excuse me, but then realized nobody was there. And where the hell was he going to, you know? Wow. Uh, yeah. But I told you about those stewards. Uh -huh. They wore black shoes, white trousers, and white t-shirts. Here, I we had say, say locker, right? Yeah, a linen locker. And over here, we had senior officers. Oh. So I could see him getting bedding or linen or whatever out of here, uh -huh. and then going through the door. It is no longer here. So there was a door that was yeah, there. Yeah, you can see the shape yeah. of the door. Yeah, wow. And even the, the viewing port, so you can look out before you open the door. Oh, interesting. Yeah, pretty cool.
cool, huh? Uh huh. That train's going. Yep, got the linen or going that way. Yep. Wow. That's the captain, the executive officer, then you'd have the uh, air boss. Again, this was only put in here for convenience. It's, it, I know it's blocking the lockers and everything else, but that's not being used. But we get people in, that, like including me, if I'm too tired to go drive home, I'll come in here and sleep in here for a couple hours. And do you ever hear anything while you're in here? No, no, because I'll take my hearing aids out. But, oh, uh, and y'all have a yeah. full bathroom right. and everything, huh? Yep. Like I said, he was a 13 year guy. Wow. I was sitting here one time you know, talking to a couple of uh, visitors and right outside here, now this would be outside the ship, okay? I heard this real loud thump right against, and it was, holy crap, where'd that come from? Hmm. I'm thinking I'm hearing something out here, but I didn't know if it was one of y'all stepping me. You might be. Now one, I can't remember when it was, but we have, were having one of our events and I was sleeping in here, and another volunteer was sleeping in the ops bus because mm -hmm. we didn't get done until like three. Oh, you mean somebody actually sleeps in that room? Yeah. Oh. Anyway, uh, yeah, he was over there. Anyway, uh, got down here about three, three thirty in the morning before we finally finished, and then about five some, I was on my feet standing out in the passageway mm -hmm. in my underwear, looking at him in his underwear because. Both of us were woke up at the same time with somebody, it sounded like they were pushing a very heavy cart down that passageway. Wow. And we both agreed on what it sounded like. And I'm deaf, so you know how, how loud, it, loud it had to be. And uh, anyway, there's no way you could push a heavy cart down that passageway because you got those combings. Yeah, on the side, you can't yeah. go through them. Yeah, but we both heard it. Mm. Wow. Anyway, he hasn't come back to work one of those events since. Really? Yeah. Scared him. <laughs> I was like, look at the room he was sleeping in. <laughs> well, we, uh, we were putting in new electronic stuff, and, and the guy that did it, this guy named Adolfo uh, from Mexico, but he's a whiz at electronics. And, but he had this pot of money that had to be spent within a certain amount of time, mm -hmm. or else he was going to lose it. Right. And, uh, so he and his sister, well, I take it back, his sister was still in Mexico at the time. She didn't come up here till later. But he's living in town in an apartment. Uh, but he said, you know, I could spend, I could save an hour and a half a day extra by sleeping in here instead of driving back and forth at uh, home. So nice. the, the ship said, yeah, use it. Anyway, he did, and he got done in time and everything. But uh, uh, he, he was talking about all the stuff was going on including one night uh, when he just felt he missed his sister. Uh -huh. And so he's talking on his phone, FaceTime or whatever, I, I, uh -huh. I, I don't know what it is, but FaceTime, but anyway, uh, you could kind of see you and, you know, yeah, and, each other. Said, and, and his sister asked him, who's in the room with you? And he said, no. Is, is there water coming through those pipes? Yeah. Okay. But he uh, asked, why do you ask? Because nobody's in here. He said, I see an old, old man over your, your shoulder. He's looking at his face in there and he doesn't see it, but he's looking around and uh -huh. there's nothing. And she can see it. But she could see an old man wow. looking looking over his shoulder. Wanted to see who she was talking to. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, there's there's a lot happening here. Yeah. I would I would imagine, especially when it's quiet like this and it's at night and nothing going on. Their day or night or still is going on and you could still hear them out there running back and forth they're doing what they had to do at night and you're just sound asleep mm -hmm. wow i can imagine i wouldn't want to try it but i can imagine <laughs> well out in that passageway uh, i used to some nights i see a lot of them i a lot, a lot maybe three or four shadow people mm -hmm. peeking around the corner at me uh, but then they pull their head back when they you know they've been seen uh, other times I don't see a thing, but we had Ghost Brothers on here, mm -hmm. and they were out in the passageway, and, and all the lights were turned off. I said, "Don't do that," but they did it anyway. And not them, the the producer. Right. Anyway, uh, uh, 
if you watch it, it's, it's Ghost Brothers, Lights Out, uh, Fight or Flight, something like that. I'm going to have to look at it. I want to go yeah. back and look at it. Well, in there, they got a full body shadow person. Really? They, 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 that, that, that was the one they caught, and you really got to look close to see it. Uh, but I'll show you where that happened. Okay. Anyway, the uh, uh, you, you, you'll see them standing out in the passageway talking, then simultaneously all of them will put their heads around it because they would see something out of the corner of their eye and they'd uh -huh. flip around to look at it and it'd be a shadow person that they could see that just didn't translate to camera. And uh, they said, well, man, they saw a bunch of them. Wow. Oh, because it was the uh, night vision. They have it yeah, on night vision? Infrared. Yeah. yeah, they have an infrared camera uh, on a tripod station right outside the chief engineer's office. Where they knew he, they would see them a lot there? Was that a hot spot for them? Well, I told them that this entire passageway is a hot spot, so that's why they put up the tr tripod right. and left it running 24 hours a day. They just, uh, they worked in 12 hour shifts, and so they come on in and replace the, the batteries. And How many days were they here? Total of eight days. Now the, wow. the brothers themselves were only here for three days, okay. but they did eight worth eight days worth of filming. Oh, wow! You got me feeling lately like a new world has begun. The only thing we've had up, up here is about two instances where somebody would be seen on the other side of that plastic right there. Uh huh. And uh, so the, the volunteer working up here would come back and not see him and wonder where he was. Mm -hmm. So come on back here and nobody would be there. And going wow. up ain't going to get you anywhere. Yeah. Captain had two cabins. He had an in port cabin and a sea cabin. Uh, because he wanted a ready access to the bridge. So right over there is a door that he can be from here to over to there in like two minutes. Man, he had his room set up and everything there. Pilot house. Any questions about it? No. Well, of course, you steered with this rudder angle indicator where you could tell, tell how far right, how much uh, right left rudder you had or left rudder. Uh, engine order telegraph that would send the speed indicator down to uh, engine room. We had two engine rooms. Anyway, tell them how fast to go. These are, uh, of course, you had your magnetic compass. Your, your, and these are electronic compasses uh, run by a, uh, oh geez, I'm getting tired. Uh, <laughs> by an electronic juju thing. <laughs> you know, they think I'm a jig. Yeah. <laughs> Gyroscope. They would operate, we had four gyro and after gyro. Uh, you know, it spins real fast and it helps uh -huh. overcome their Earth's influence. Uh, you can tell that, but uh, did you ever, I'm sure you've ridden a bike. You ever uh -huh. get on a bike and try to go real slow? Uh -huh. Can't do well. The faster you go, the more steady you are because of the gyroscopic effect of the wheels. That's what's helping keeping you up. Oh, got it. Anyway, this is the uh, bridge out here. This whole thing is, is uh, known as the navigation bridge, but like I said, you've got the pilot house and the bridge. Oh, I need to try this Navigator's chair. Captain's chair. There's a captain always sitting on the left chair. Mm -hmm. Commanding officer. There you go. Plus, you could tell that just because of other instruments he had. The officer of the deck and the junior officer of the deck did a lot of stuff, but they, they had all the information they need right there. And the quartermasters and all that, everybody was... was but the junior officer of the deck was usually the one giving the commands. And he knew that the officer of the deck was watching, see what he was doing, because he knew the captain was over here watching his instruments. Cool. And the last thing you wanted to do was look at the captain and have the captain give you one of these. <laughs> Come here. Of 
cool. What are you looking for? Down the white barber. Or else gear back on 70. It's called Harper Common. It's run by the Coast Guard. And uh, we well, listen right to it every now and again because if the Coast Guard needs help, uh, as a matter of fact, we've got a Coast Guard chart up there which shows all the ships coming and going. And they, if we're watching for something in particular, we can send, send a watch up here. But we have access to Harbor Common. We're doing here is uh, doing a little bit of spirit box. Uh, this is where Nancy likes to go because she likes dousing rods. She's really very good at it. Nancy. But uh, we, yeah, we, we get uh, spirits in here in the wardrobe. Uh, I did call Dalen one time and accuse uh, Marcus and Joan mm -hmm. of uh, Hollywood. Because the camera's over here and you can see them walking through, then all uh -huh. of a sudden there's a loud pop and a vibration. Uh -huh. And they're doing the, the whoa thing, you know. Uh -huh. So I called him up and he said, No, he said, You talked to the guys and that really did happen. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, yeah, I got it. Uh -huh. well, we were, uh, I was prepping sector guides for our big event in, I can't remember, spring or whatever, but I had one young lady in, in uh, marketing that did not want to do it, mm -hmm. but I took her to the late, least problem, you know, the least haunted area, uh, so maybe she could deal with it, but uh, we were leaving the Admiral's conference room and she had a question, so I turned around and I'm at the end of the conference room and she's about three or four feet away. All of a sudden we heard this loud pop and the deck shook just in that one area. I swear to God, I don't know how it happened. You know, but if we're looking at each other like, did this crap really happen? So I had to call Dalen back and apologize. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he was like, something was going to show you it was real, huh? Yeah. That's too funny. Oh, what'd you do with all the chairs? You can sit around here. Just by the way, you notice all these tables are rectangular except for this one? Yeah. Yeah. This was a senior officer table. Oh, so wow. we'll set it at the senior officer table. Uh. Yes. Yes. What is your name? Can you, can you see the device that I have at the end of the table? Can you go and touch it? What did he say? Let's all do this together? I sure understood. They're all there together. They're all there together. They're all there together. Can you see us? I carry a pair to clip because I'll be walking around the ship and all of a sudden something will happen. And it's like, did that really happen? So, are those dowsing rods? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, these, these have got their own little bucket that they swivel in. So it's yeah. impossible to manipulate. No, that, that's fine. We can use it. Okay. Both. Straighten the rods, please. Straighten the rods. Are any spirits here with us tonight? Yes or no? Yeah. No, it said no, no. Well, this said yes. <laughs> okay, open them up, please. Open the rods. I'm going to ask another question. Is the chief engineer with us tonight? Yes or no? no. Is Commander Sutherland with us tonight? Yes or no? Commander Sutherland was the executive officer. The senior officer that was killed in the kamikaze attack. Oh. He burned to death. Wow. After he, he died after like three or four days. So, man, that has to be miserable. Yeah. Uh, is the ship's boxing with us tonight? Yes or no? What? Y'all ain't eating tonight or what? Open the rug. Are there any pilots in here? Yes or no?
we always had the question, since these were officers, uh -huh. how many ate up here and then left and never returned? Oh. Anyway, at one point we uh, had 17 officers identified, uh -huh. uh, but the guy said, I really don't know how many, because he told us the 17, but there might be more. Look, is that thing was moving. Huh? It started to flash. Oh. Can you make that, uh, any of the machines on that, could you make them flash? Can you do that please? Okay, the one at the end, all you have to do is get near the antenna. You don't even have to touch the antenna. Okay, open, open up, please. I'll put the other one here. Turn around. I'm going to put the other one on here. Now, what was this? Look, cat ball's going off. Cat ball. Look, cat ball. I'm only going up from here It's a brand 